everyone. I'm just looking for the clicker. Hi, yeah, thanks for that, Matt. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Alex. I'm one of the researchers working at SaveSite as well. Um, the research I'm doing is into keratoconus, which is a condition of the front of the eye. So I just wanted to sp speak for a few minutes just about the work we're doing and the broader work at SaveSite, which you know, affects other conditions which we kind of tack on to as well. There we go, OK. Um, so what is keratoconus? Does anyone here have keratoconus at all? Probably a lot more kind of retinal people here. But yeah, anyway, it's, uh, it affects the front of the eye. The front of the eye is called the cornea, and that's like the window to the eye. Um, it's very important, and what it does is it focuses the light from um, the outside into, a, into an image that's focused on the retina to then be seen. And so in keratoconus, what happens is the cornea becomes thinned, and it bulges out in a, in a cone shape instead of being a nice regular dome. The effect that has is it stops light focusing in properly and the light gets scattered all over the, the place inside the eye and so the person who's got it has very blurred vision and they particularly struggle with light being um, reflected all over the eye and you know if they walk outside into, a, into the sun they, they really struggle with the dazzle from the sun. Picture on the right there is um, just a split image. The bottom is what a, a healthy person might um, see through their eye and the top is for keratoconus so have a lot of problem driving with night lights and glare of the headlights and really struggle um, don't think this really works um, yeah so so what is it really like for patients um, it is it is a real challenge day to day um, and this affects patients who are you know people who are who are young and they you know school children teenagers and young adults so really at a time when they're flying and full throttle and lots of things and so being held back by a visual problem is a real struggle for them. Um, so I want to show next in just a second um, a video, hopefully it works, haven't tested it so it may not. Um, this is a song called Daniel, um, this is from YouTube, he's describing what it's like to have keratoconus. Um, he's actually just had a procedure done called cross-linking which is kind of a new, a new type of surgery that I'm involved in studying. Um, and the idea of that is it tries to stop, it, it basically stops the keratoconus getting worse. And he's just had this and he's talking about his experiences and it's kind of, he's still a little bit unhappy with things and struggling a bit if it works. Um, but after the procedure, for some reason, you know, you kind of have that thing where you think that, oh, okay, everything's going to be okay now, right? It stopped, the, the, it's not progressing anymore or whatever. You go to see the doctor for follow-up, it's like, yeah, everything's okay. Uh, I look at your eye, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's, re it's healing perfectly. Um, yes, we did a good job. And that's it. So he, he thinks he's done a good job. Um, so I have another follow-up with him a year later. Now, in the meanwhile, my eyes still hurt, right? I, I always had that feeling where, like, my left eye had something in it. Um, and I went back to see him. I was like, no, you got nothing. I'm like, okay. Um, so... I'm like, that's weird. I go back to work and, you know, I, I, I can work regular days, but I realize, like, I really have to focus and, and, and really stretch my eyes to, like, its limit. And I got headaches all the time. I get home, I just get, I can't deal, deal with light anymore. All that stuff. And I mean, like, like, to me, it felt like it's not fair. You know, you can't tell me everything is okay. And that's how I feel. Yes, that's just a little kind of insight to what it's like. Um, and that's kind of a problem. Um, you know, we don't, want, we don't want anyone to go through what he's going through. And the problem with this new type of surgery is um, any, any kind of surgery has risks, and a small proportion of people will have complications and things go wrong and lose vision. So we don't try and, you know, bowl in and just give everyone this treatment, um, which stops things getting worse. We need to make sure that they, they need it, and we're giving it to the right people who are getting worse. And it's a shame that Daniel there got it a bit late, because he obviously has all these problems, which... This surgery just stops things getting worse, but doesn't make it get any better. Um, so, um, and also you can, you can hear from him that clearly he's not communicating very well with his doctor. Um, his doctor sounds like he's not listening to him at all. And so we need to be listening more to our patients and try and understand how things are really affecting them and try and that incorporate that into our care for them. So what's our, what's our vision at the safe site? So we, we basically want to stop all that. We want to... We want to have the right information to know exactly wh which patients are getting worse and when, and know when they need this treatment at the right time for them. We want to know, for an individual patient, you know, is it 
with their condition, their measurements and all these things, that it's, it's personally the right thing for them to do, not just a blanket thing for everyone and miss people who need treatments or undertreat people. Um, and we also want to have the right information about how things are affecting patients so we can give them the information to tell them, look, your, your life is going to change in this way. Are you sure you want this surgery? Or, you know, it's probably going to improve things by this amount, so I know you're scared, but it's worth it, you know, from, from the data we have. Anyway, so that's, that's what we want. Um, so how are we getting there? Um, so I'm working on the SAVE site registry for keratoconus, and this is part of a much broader project. Um, it initially started for retinal disease for patients who, have, who are more elderly, who have things like macular degeneration. Um, and basically what it is is an online um, system which logs all the measurements um, from patients when they come to the clinic and their vision and all the scans and parameters that we measure and puts them into their personalized profile. So what that does, um, it allows us to track their progress year by year and really see for the person what's happening to their eyes and know, you know more targeted uh, who needs treatment and when. And this is actually expanding now into other diseases and um, Professor Griggs actually about to start one in, for inherited retinal conditions, which I know a lot of you um, are suffering from. And the idea there is to, to track things more effectively and be able to, you know, as we have more treatments, be able to deploy them to the people when they need it. And so this is just um, some information, so some of the data we first started to, to get from this. What we've, what we've found looking at the information is that those patients who are about 20 years old are more likely to get worse in a year than those who are about 26. And patients who have measurements of, of a steepness over a certain level are also going to get worse. So with this information, we now can link this into the system. And we can now, if, some, you know, if someone comes in the clinic and hasn't been seen in six months or they come for the first time, we can say, look, you're in our system and you have, you're showing these things. And this makes us think things are going to get worse. So you're someone who it's worth going this, through the small risks of a problem to try and save your eyes. And so that's, that's, that's how we're using it. Um, this is a little bit of um, information on the, on the element of listening to patients. Um, as, as Professor Grigg alluded to earlier, uh, it, we're just, you know, it's, it's so important to us to listen to patients about how their lives are affected by things, just like Daniel and how his life is affected. This is a study um, where they looked at patients who had knee surgery. Um, they, use a, they use a complicated video scanner to see how patients are recovering. So immediately after the surgery, they can't walk as well because they're just in the early recovery phase, and then things get easier. So on that bottom graph, you can see things get worse as the graph goes down just after the surgery. And then over the year, you can see the graph going up as their, their knee recovers and they're able to walk faster. That, that scanning machine costs about 50,000 US dollars and takes about 15 minutes. Um, if you look on the, the slide above, this is a, a specific knee-related questionnaire. And as you can see, it follows a very similar shape. And actually, we're finding out you know, exactly that same information in something which takes one minute just asking the patients in a, in a, in a clever way <laughs> and listening to them <laughs> rather than trying to do too many fancy things. Um, it just illustrates how important it is to listen to you guys and how important it is you know, for us to incorporate that into how we're looking after you. And so what are we doing in that regard? Well, we have a questionnaire which has been specifically designed for keratoconus. That was actually made in a uh, university in South Australia. We're now incorporating that into our, into our research uh, program. It's asked things like, um, do you get any distortion with your vision? Are you getting headaches or tired eyes? Similar to things, the things which are affecting Daniel and a list of other questions. Um, and then this we can enter into the registry and the patient's profile and save it to them and give that numbers. And we can kind of track how they're going year by year. And, you know, it's difficult to remember how things, you know, it's difficult for me to remember what happened for lunch, let alone what was happening six months ago with my eyes specifically. But we can now take these questions and tell them, look, your eyes are, were this bad and you were, this was affecting your life and things are getting worse, so you need treatment. And we're actually now using an iPad to record this data so people can put it straight into their profile. Um, what have we found? We found that these question, this questionnaire works really well. Um, it works in the clinic and we can, we can use it uh, in, in a clinical setting and it, and it works um, easily. And we can see that patients are, are getting worse and identify those patients that need this cross-linking treatment. As, um, 
as uh, I mentioned, Professor Grigg is expanding into the rental diseases um, side of things. And similar to this, um, he's going to be developing a questionnaire which will be asking people with retinal diseases how they're getting on and, again, help us to track people more closely about who needs treatment. Um, so, yeah, that's just a summary about what I'm doing in, in my area and what the Safe Site is doing, you know, overall in this, in this regard. And um, just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, you guys have clearly given up your time to be here, and without us working together, you know, we can't move things forward and try and help you guys and future generations. So thank you very much. It just goes to show that the uh, that, that you know this machine learning and big data sort of um, process is going to hopefully pay dividends for us down the track.